Hello, my name is Joseph and I am the founder of Gentleman's Armor. Together we'll explore the world of tradition, craftsmanship and quality. In today's video, we're going to talk about ties. What are ties? The history of ties, the tailoring of the ties, the different tie knots, what type of ties fit you according to your face, and finally, the fabrics that we can use for quality ties. Before we begin, please take a moment and subscribe to our channel, leave a comment and press the like button. It really gives us the strength to continue and explore the world of tradition, craftsmanship and quality. The tie, worn primarily by men, is an elongated strip of cloth tied around the neck by means of a knot. It is worn under the shirt collar and its function is primarily to hide the front buttoning of the shirt. The tie is perhaps the most important accessory of a man in a formal outing. Can be proud that is not a piece of cloth that is simply tied around a man's neck, but is now a symbol in the field of a global fashion. The tie is associated with the crotch. They did not invent it, but spread it as an accessory in Europe in the 17th century. Croatian soldiers who participated in the Thirty Years' War 1618-1648 were recognizable by the neckerchiefs they tied around their necks, an ancestor of the necktie. In 1635, when about 6,000 Croatian soldiers served in France, a regiment of them visited Paris. The crotch appeared before Louis XIV to elicit his praise and depress the French monarchs known for his elegance with their scarves around their neck. The French monarchs introduced the Croatian style, established the tie and founded the royal cravats constitution. Officers wore ties made of silk and other high quality fabrics and common soldiers wore ties of inferior materials. The tie from France passed as a fashion in Belgium and Holland and from there to England, where the new accessory became widely known. Be that as it may, it is certainly the only accessory that has served 400 years of social changes. Even now, when some designers want to do away with it, the tie resists and will probably win. Neck ornaments have been a part of people's everyday life since ancient times. Back then, it was an expression of wealth or social status or simply want to hold back sweat. But today, things are very different. Ties first adapted something in the 16th century, during the reign of Louis XIV, are now poorly decorative. A few decades ago, men wore a tie almost every day, not just as a decorative element, but because it showed strength and won the admiration of all those around you. We can recognize the three types of tailoring of the ties. These are the three folded tie, the five folded tie and the seven folded tie. The characteristics of the three folded tie are the fact that it is a daily choice with less inner lining, but without falling behind in fabric quality, as the quality of the fabric used is quite high, such as silk. Also, another characteristic is its light weight and the flexibility gives to the wear. This type of tie involves each folding which is equal to 5 folds of the silk, so as to give our tie its cohesion and a unique feel and appearance. This type of tie is a more complicated process, as in contrast to the three folded tie, in this case we distinguish a greater weight and therefore a greater amount of fabric used, so as to return our tie into a more robust, stable, complete structure. For its correct tailoring, the basic characteristic is the tailor's professionalism and the skills and knowledge he possesses. There are many different tie knots, so anyone can choose what he likes. Let's analyze four of them, which are more popular. The origin of this knot is from Duke of Windsor. Although the Duke never specifically used this knot, 
He favored a broad triangular knot. The Windsor knot was invented by the public as a way to imitate the Duke's style of knots. This knot offers a symmetrical and solid triangular knot that works best on sets whose collars are at an obtuse angle. It is not considered suitable for slimline suits and is mainly used in a job interview and in more special occasions such as wedging or christenings. It is one of the most common knots, symmetrical and thin with a triangular shape. It is considered the most reliable solution for sets that have a regular collar. The originator of this knot was Jerry Pratt, who was an employee of the US Chamber of Commerce. It uses less length than the Windsor knot and is suitable for shorter ties or taller men. The peculiarity of this knot is that it is tied with the seam of the tie facing outwards. The result is elegant, modern and symmetrical. This type of knot is the easiest knot to learn while combining it with thick ties is the ideal choice for fitting it. The ties that have different colors should be matched based on the colors of your skin. If you are quite fair, then purple, blue and red are the ideal colors for you. However, if you have darker skin, then you should probably choose shades in dark green and brown. A pattern tie can break out your personality. Patterns are a way to break away from the classic monochrome office style. You can mix and match patterns, for example, a striped suit with a circle tie, as long as you keep the same tones in the colors. Red, blue, black or brown, the tie has nothing to invite from other accessories, but on the contrary, it is now considered an integral part of an appearance, which it completes with particular elegance and style. The materials used to create quality ties are 100% natural. The use of polyester fibers does reduce the expenditure for the ready-to-wear industry, but the result is suffocating for men's neck as synthetic materials tend to cause perspiration. Silk is the main tie material, while wool provides warmth in the winter months and a distinct style, especially when paired with tweed or flannel jacket. Silk woven ties have a questionably end a place in the pantheon of classic menswear. Their rich texture gives them beautiful notes and their British origin is a guarantee of subtle elegance. The designs they may have, stripes, checks and even micro patterns such as flowers, geometric shapes, are created during the weaving process. Unlike printed ones, where their elaborate and sometimes fancy designs are the brainchild of silk screen printing. Obviously, knitted woolen ties are not suitable for the summer months, where during the summer any form of necktie is hardly tolerated. Silk knitted ties, however, apart from being able to be worn for several months, are also a style statement for whoever chooses them. Their special texture, the feel they have on the fingers, even the sound the silk makes when you tie them is special. In fact, there is a type of knitted tie made of hard silk which is called Cri de la Soie, the cry of silk because of that very characteristic sound they make. With the exception of screen prints, where only the imagination can limit the design, woven ties are usually plain, checked and striped. Striped ties originated in Britain, with the colors used being those of a club or university. Special mention must be made of the regimental ties, which are in the colors of specific military corps such as the Royal Hussars, the Paratroopers, etc. The Americans copied this tradition with only one difference. The stripes on British regimental ties start from the top left and go down to the right, while on the American ones they go the other way around, starting from the top right and going down to the left. As regimental ties semiotically communicate something very special, i.e. that those who wear them have served in the particular corps or have studied at the particular university. They should be avoided by those who do not meet the conditions. After all, there are so many colors and options.